Welcome to episode 13 of Truth Seekers. I am your host, Brian Radzen. Lucky 13, here we go. I know I like to say that every time we, uh, or every time I do one of these episodes, hopefully have some guests on soon. Um, I just, I, I love it. I love putting my voice out there, having the tough conversations, because that's what this is all about. This show, this channel, uh, life really is having those conversations, tough conversations. Some of those tough conversations are with ourselves. So don't shy away from that person you have a hard time talking to. Because chances are the reason we're having a hard time talking to them is because we're having a hard time talking to ourselves. Now, that could spring out into a lot of issues, so, and I will cover that on a future episode. But today, today we're going to talk about ignorance. Now, ignorance can take many forms. As far as someone's station in life, the environment they come from, the family structure they were brought up in, the religious order that they were indoctrinated by. You know, it could... It, it comes from a lot of places. But I would say is even our... Uh, even the better things that we have in common with each other, the good things that we have in common, because there are bad things we have in common as well. But one of the good things is, uh, you know, is... Is vigilance is vigilance to what's right I think a lot of us have that in us whether we want to admit it or not now sometimes this can be skewed in one direction or the other it can head off one way or head off another but what it really boils down to is it can devolve into fear how does it devolve into fear? What is ignorance? Well, basically ignorance is some, basically, you know, us not knowing something, we're ignorant of it. So when someone says we're ignorant of the situation on the ground, we don't know what it's about, even though we espouse that we do. We don't know something but we say that we do because it makes us feel more in control. When we don't know something, it can be scary, right? Walking into the unknown. I mean, what other than that is, you know, walking into something scary that we don't know. Which can also go in a few different directions. You can go down this rabbit hole or you can go down that rabbit hole. And hopefully we don't go in, down any rabbit holes especially as far as ignorance is concerned, because it can quickly blow out of proportion. Now, I would say that a good, a good portion of the voting population has been ignorant to a lot of the issues that has uh, befuddled them for a long time. I mean, what was the book uh, back when that I really liked? What's the Matter with Kansas? Basically, the author asking, you know, how can these working class, seemingly salt of the earth people constantly and completely keep voting against their interests? Sounds ignorant. Well, it's true that they are voting against their interests, but if that's where we stop, then we're the ignorant ones because we don't know. It's all ignorance means is we don't know something. I mean, yes, I could be taking a math uh, test in fifth grade and the teacher could say, you're ignorant of uh, studying or you're ignorant of uh, the test. You didn't think you needed to study. Well, we do need to study a lot of things in life. Let's take where we're at now. We've got an election coming up, right? Okay, so we got an election between ever-widening divisions and ever-widening, uh, you know, partisanship. Ran by a man who, you know, beyond all the, you know, 
con artist, bankrupt, mob tied self, Deutsche Bank, whatever. He's selling and uh, selling his uh, brand, which he always has, to the ignorant. To the ignorant who say that, who think that everyone in this country can be a millionaire. Everybody can be rich. Now, that's not to say that any one of us out there can't have an idea that we can then run with. We can. That's one of the great things about living in a, I was going to say democracy. I was going to say a capitalist society. But really, we're not any of those. We're an amalgamation of something that we can't fully explain yet. There is no label for it. And why would why should we want to put a label on it? Think about when you have a spiritual experience. Okay, there's all these things coming in, whether it be through prayer, group prayer, sweat lodge, uh, could be just you visualizing something while you're by yourself at the forest or the beach. This is a time when we get a glimpse of something. A glimpse of something that we can feel within us, but we don't really know what it is. We don't know what the answer is. So what do we do? We either ignore it, or we try to explain it in such a way that not only can we understand, but then when we go around and share it with others, they can then understand it and continue sharing it to others. And so on and so forth. Now hopefully this is a good experience. You know, the love that we felt, we try to put into words this spiritual velvety, blankety covering that just makes us feel all cozy and hugs our soul and uh, talks to us on such a deep level that how do you put words to that? But you try because it, it it's the only way you can uh, explain it or describe it. So we do that. We go through that. Go through the experience. Hopefully it's a good one. Then we come out, analyze it, Try to explain it to ourselves, and then, like I said, try to explain it to others. Now, this is our experience. It's our personal opinion. Even somebody else viewing what we went through could have a different answer, right? So who's the ignorant one in this situation? I would say everybody and nobody. Everybody's ignorant because they don't know exactly what's going on, right? They don't know exactly what's going on because they can't explain it, what's happening to them or what's happening to you. And you're ignorant because neither can you. Because we're all in the same boat of this explaining. Now, hopefully in a deeply spiritual setting, um, what comes out of it is good. Although think about the flip side. Think about when one person has one experience with say a person of another race that's not so positive. And they've already been raised in such a way to believe that that other person is the problem, that they're always the ones that are committing the crimes and they're always the ones that are, uh, you know, murdering and raping our children or whatever they say. You know, that thing that can quickly devolve even further. But that's the sort of thing that gets passed down. So when we have this one event say I don't know say we got in an argument say we thought we felt threatened by three four black teenagers now there's been stories like that in the past where some white dude at a gas station got all scared or because of his ignorance and of not knowing these people or of not knowing really that no group can be generalized against he you know started arguing and then pulled his gun and shot and killed you know I don't remember the guy's name. That's my fault. I, I I try to keep up on a lot of this, but it's sometimes impossible to know everybody's name. And that's the sad part because we're becoming ignorant of the real problem. We're ignoring the real problem. This is where ignorance comes from, ignoring. 
ignoring the truth. Do we want to ignore the truth? I mean, do we want to be in such a place that we can't even see what's in front of our face? Now, when let's go back to this experience. Now, when we have this one bad experience, then we share it with other people who may or may not have been raised like us to think and to think like us. They may have had similar experiences. So now we're building the ignorance. We're big, building the ignorance of all these people ignoring what's going on the ground. So you have the far right ignoring what's going on the ground. Some on the far left, more on the far right. I do not think it's equal. And I will argue anybody who thinks otherwise. Yes, extremists are the problem. Extremists are the problem because they all ignore what's going on. Now I remember, you know, it's always been like this. I mean, not this pronounced, not this pronounced, but you know, Bush and Cheney mess things up pretty good. Then you have the nation's first black president at, in response. And then in response to the first black president, we have somebody who's touting openly racist and conspiratorial views to drum up uh, militia support, armed militia support, armed illegal militia support. Let me put it that way because it is illegal to have a private militia. They're calling on all that to defend the real people to defend the real people okay i mean is this what is this what we've come to to defend the real people you know all those people that claim that we were this white christian nationalist country that that if your religion or your your the 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 color of your skin um doesn't uh, you know, rise to what we think is acceptable, then you should not live here and you should go the hell away. GTFO. Leave us, uh, you know, lonely, peaceful, law-abiding, God-fearing white people alone. I mean, what could be more ignorant? Well, a lot of things can be ignorant, especially if you put your imagination to it. So, I mean, how do we, how do we begin to fix this? How do we be, how do we ease the divide? How do we ease the divide between these two ever widening groups that are starting to become more ignorant of each other as they go further and further into their corners and become more and more extreme? How do we bridge the gap? Well, it's easy. How do we beat ignorance? Knowledge. Knowledge is the opposite of ignorance. You're not ignoring. You're learning what's going on. We need to talk to each other. One of the favorite songs that I've come up on is, I mean, I've, believe me, I don't have the best singing voice or I would start singing it right now, but you know, mother, mother. Yeah. There's a line in that song that says, you know, talk to me so you can see what's going on. I'll tell you what's going on and you can tell me what's going on. I mean, you know where I'm going with this. We need to have these conversations. We need to have, we need to tell each other exactly how we feel. And if it's something we don't want to hear or, you know, want to shy away from because we don't feel, uh, you know, we feel scared, we feel weird, we don't like conflict, we don't like people mad at us, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to. We want to ignore this. Can't we just go do something else? You see how this builds the ignorance all back up again? It builds back up. It builds back up until it creates fear. Now I will go more into that side of things tomorrow, but this ignorance, this ignorance will kill us because the way it can quickly devolve. Now, I've always had a problem with people on whatever side uh, talking about, you know, slippery slopes. So you're basically saying, well, if this leads to this, to this, to this, 
then, you know, this thing 25 steps down the road is going to happen. Maybe. No guarantee. As long as if we can at least look at evidence in such a way that we're not ignoring it, we're just seeing what's actually there. And yes, these clues can build up an idea in our mind of what we want to see, of what can happen. Doesn't mean it will, but it does mean that we need to pay attention to what's going on. We need to pay attention to how we're treating ourselves, how we're treating our families, how we're treating our community, how we're treating our neighbors. We need to not be ignorant of anybody's needs, of anybody, period. This should be a time when all of us are coming together. All the bullshit stripped away. A lot of us have lost jobs. The economy's crashing for, you know, the not one-tenth of one percent. And, you know, it, 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 it was supposed to knock all the bullshit away. So that we see the reason why we're fighting each other is for the same reason. We're blaming each other for our problems instead of the string pullers at the top that, uh, you know, just make us dance like marionettes and they don't give a shit what happens to us. They just need us to keep fighting because then we'll be distracted from what they're really doing. And don't we all want to know what they're really doing? Aren't all of us tired of being ignorant to what our government is telling us? To what we're telling ourselves? I mean, think about what we're telling ourselves. The messages that we, that we, you know, plant in our brains. I remember somebody saying once, you know, if uh, we told kids what we say to ourselves in our heads, we'd probably all be in prison. Think about it. Words matter. Words matter. Actions matter. I mean, it's, it's how it's, all of it's interconnected. Actions, words, thoughts, decisions, it's all interconnected. But the biggest thing that we can do for ourselves, for the future evolution of our species, for the improvement of the planet into a loving, peaceful, light-filled wonderland of discovery. What? One thing we can do? We can start loving ourselves. Is it really that hard? Look in the mirror and like what we see. If we don't like what we see, we can either fake it till we make it, or we can um, ask ourselves why we don't like ourselves. And then ask why we think that. And we do this enough times, we're going to find out that we've been ignorant of ourselves who we truly are. I mean, isn't low self-esteem built off self-ignorance? And if that's where we're starting, we're ignoring that to then ignore what's really going on with someone else and then projecting our shit onto them. Then we're ignoring what they're really like or what their group's like or their family's like. Because... Oh, everybody's the same. Any group, right? Come on. It's the 21st century. None of us are that stupid anymore. Come on. Okay. So, I mean, what? where is this all leading? I don't know. Hopefully not to a you know, mass casualty event. None of us want to see that. But if they just keep devolving out of control... You know, like I said, I hate slippery slopes. And sometimes in my own head, I can't help but describe them. I don't know what else to say. It sucks. But I have faith. Now, what's the difference between faith and ignorance? Both based on something we don't know but feel we do. Because we can't ever know those things for certain. But it's a feeling. It's not. It's it's a feeling that we feel inside that 
you know, boosts our mood and our outlook and what we want makes things a lot clearer and brighter and... Hmm. It allows us to breathe. Let's kind of stop letting, you know, making people not breathe anymore. Let's get off their necks. Not to just talking about police with black Americans. Or any dark-skinned person in any other country that goes through the same shit as we do. It's time we stop being ignoring all those problems that that we say we've gotten handled yet we can't stop talking about how it's a problem. These are what we need to fix. We start with the self, stop ignoring what's in our head, start dealing with it and it won't evolve. We will evolve to be even better people. But it won't evolve to the next step, which is uh, not pretty. However, the less we ignore, the less we ignore, the more we see. Don't all of us want to see? Stop blinding ourselves. Let's love each other by loving ourselves so we can love everyone. Isn't that the goal? Isn't that always the human goal? Well, I love you all, and we'll talk soon. Remember to like and share this video and hit the subscribe button. Links for all my social media, my website, and where to buy my books are in the description below. Love and gratitude will find a way. We just have to keep the conversations going. See you all soon.